is from the user's computer to the server, and it's called Paperclip. And so I'll uh, search for Paperclip Gem, and the first one that comes up is by this uh, company called Thoughtbot. Uh, on the GitHub site, again, well, all the gems, all the most recent gems are on GitHub these days. And you can, you can look and see it's done, they actually did some work 20 days ago, two months ago, seven months ago, so it's fairly recent and up to date. Uh, the one thing that it does really well is, is that it Im integrates with a program called Image Magic. But an image magic is a uh, a program that you can install on the native operating system. It's not a gem. It's a uh, a binary file that you have to download for Windows or for the Mac or for Linux separately. And what it is is an image processor. So you can it it can uh, convert images from a ping to a uh, a GIF and a JPEG. It does conversions. It does automatic resizing of an image programmatically. So you can tell Image Magic, I want this image to be 50% of its size, of the original size, and it will shrink it in whatever format it came in and give you back a, the same format but a smaller size. You can have it do things like uh, uh, you can draw on the image, you can place text on the image, you can put a, a watermark on the image. Anybody that's used uh, yeah, in the image like uh, stock photo and things like that, they show you the image, what it looks like, but they have this watermark across the image. And if you try to download it, you've got this watermark that you, you can't get rid of easily or at all. But if you buy it, they give you the version without the watermark. So these kind of, pro they use these types of programs so that when somebody uploads an image, they automatically, programmatically put a watermark on it and keep two versions of the, of the file. So uh, all of that can be done with this image magic. And they say it, it must be installed, but that's not entirely true. If we're going to use Paperclip just to upload the file and not do any post-processing on the image, we don't need image magic. And image magic is and always has been a pain in the rear to install. So I didn't want to go through that. I haven't looked at it for a while. It might be a little better. It's easier on a Mac, obviously, but uh, it doesn't uh, install nicely. So we're going to install this this gem, utilize this gem, and just like normal, we're going to use this gem paperclip command. And for those that, uh, I think we've talked about this before, this little tilde sign and a greater than sign means get me the gem that's greater than or equal to this 3.0, basically a gem that is at least this version, but a, a newer version is fine. I yeah, so I, wanna, I just want to take the no, newest version, so I'm not going to put that in at all. We put it into our gem file. I'm going to put it right next to my uh, tiny MCE that I have. Since I added a gem, what do we have to do? Bundle install. install, very good. And see, just adding that line, RubyMine figured out that we had a new gem that it had to do anyway. So let's just do this. Not to do what? Oh, I, I don't. On some of these, like will paginate comes and goes be working or not, so that one I always do. But All right, so it, it'll go out and find the gem, install, it just install Paperclip, and it came back with a note during the bundle about Paperclip 3.0 introduces this back, non-backward compatible change. So this is only, only dealing with if you used a Paperclip version prior to this and you're upgrading to this one, then you have to fix some things to get it to work. So we can safely ignore this uh, for now. Yes, so when the image magic kicks in, it'll save uh, 
a new version, a thumbnail version of that image on your operating system. So you'll have the original file, and you can actually have it save six different sizes. So it does that all post-process after you upload the file. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it depends if, if you want to keep the original or not. It, it's got all kinds of options for that. And this uh, paperclip integrates with that image magic really nicely. So that's why they do that. Some other question? Nope. Okay. No, that's right. Derail, I get it. That's pretty funny. All right. So we installed that, and like a lot of gems, they now have their own generators built into this. And when we want to add an image, we typically we have to store that somewhere, right? Uh, so, for instance, on the articles that we have, say we want to have an avatar associated with that particular article. So the author might have his own avatar to that, and and each author would have their own associated with that. So we need to store in the database something about this image. What do we typically store in the database? The path, the path to the image, OK? So we need a column to add to our model. Whatever that model is that we're going to add this image to, uh, we need to add that. So we need to generate a migration. And we're already, we already have an articles system. So we're going to uh, generate not for my purposes. You can. You can put it anywhere you want. So I'm going to run the uh, paper clip. And there, lo and behold, it installed itself as a generator. And RubyMine picked that up and knows that I can run the paper clip generator. All right, so I, I click that. And the arguments for this are, uh, if you look at, you can go back to the documentation. Um, and they, they, don't, they don't show the, the uh, generator until, see, I don't even see it. It's under I didn't see it. Or you can use, here you go. So here's the, here it is, thanks. Uh, you can use the migration generator, or you can add your own uh, migration here. So we're going to do a Rails generate paperclip generator, the model that we're going to associate it with, and the column name of what we want that to be called. OK, so in this side, I'm going to add it to my article. And I want it to be called an avatar. <coughs> And say, OK. So this is going to generate a migration for me in my migration files eventually in my database. Where's my migrations? Here we go. So it will generate a new migration here with all the stuff necessary to add a column to an existing model, in this case, my articles table. It, uh, it does do the old school, yes, but that's fine. We don't like it. You can do it the new way as well if you want. So this is the, uh, the, the file that was generated. And notice it said it, it created a nice migration name as well, add attachment avatar to articles. And so this is the old, older way of doing the migrations up and down. So when, when you go up a migration or when I actually run DB migrate, it's going to run this code. When I go down to go backwards in time, it runs this migration, this method here. So all it's going to do is say uh, that my articles model has an attached file, and we're going to call it avatar. So in my article, this is going to add a column to my articles table that will be the path name of where the file is located finally when it gets uploaded. All right, so let's, uh, let's migrate this. Um, for those, uh, you can do it this way if I, I'm going to comment this out, but if, if, I, if I wanted to do it the new school way, it would look something like this. Uh, it uses the single method. 
and we're going to say um, something like uh, has attached file uh, articles avatar, something like that. No, this has to be done in a migration because we're mi we're changing the database structure itself, and then we then we have to do something in the model as well. But that's that's basically what it would look like. Uh, that's untested, but that should work as well. I don't want to run that. <clears throat> so let's migrate this. Uh, rake db migrate. And while that's migrating, we have to change our article model. So if we go to our model and look at the articles, we need to add some information here. Um, and I'm going to purposely leave something off and uh, so we have a, a mistake that I can show you. Uh, so we're going to say add attached file, has attached file, and that comes as a method from the paperclip gem. That's not built into Rails that became available to me because I installed the gym. And I want to tell it, where am I going to put that? That's going to be in my avatar column. All right? So this changed my table. It added an article to my migration, to my actual article table. And now I need to make a change so that when they add an article, they need to be able to select a file to upload. All right, so where would I make that change? In the form for an article creation, right? So in our articles views, I'll look at the form partial, and this is where we're putting in the input text boxes and the text fields for our specific uh, article. So we're going to add some code here that is similar to this. So I'm going to copy and paste this so I have something to start with. And, uh, and we're going to have, uh, oh, I already had, did I already have an avatar? I did, didn't I? Yeah. That's unfortunate. All right, well, let's, uh, let's see what happens. That might cause some problems. We'll see what happens. All right, so this is a text field avatar, but we don't want them to type in the path name. We want to get a file. So we want to add a, browse, a browser button to, to uh, select a file, and that's called a file field. All right. Yeah, so let's see what happens. It should, it should be okay. So this changes the input now to a, a button. And so let's, uh, let's go see what happens. I should get an error anyway, but hopefully... Uh... All right, has attached file, undefined method. If you get an error like this, uh, the first thing I would try to do is stop and restart the server, okay? And RubyMine has this stop and restart button. I can just say stop, and it will rerun it, because that happens a lot. So they made a nice little button for that. Isn't that nice of them? Be possible. All right, so uh, restarted my server. Let's see if that fixed the error. Hopefully it did. Looks like it did. All right, so here's my articles. <clears throat> and uh, let's, let's do a new article. And this is uh, Dave with Avatar. And we have an author is Dave and content. This is cool. And now my avatar uh, 
input box is not an input box, it's a browsing box. So I can browse to some image. See if I have an image here that would be useful. Um, how about some sample pictures? Here's a, here's a koala. All right. So I select that, and it's going to, the browser takes over with this and is going to actually upload the file to the server. Uh, I forgot one thing, uh, and I'm going to have to reload that page. Uh, because th this form has to be able to support uh, files as well as just these input boxes, I have to modify my form for here and add uh, a um, parameter to modify the HTML for this so that I can support multi-part MIME types. What that means is that I, it will allow the browser to send a, a full file associated with this same post. So it's going to post not only the data in the text boxes, it's going to post and send an entire file. So I say multi-part is true. Okay, so I add this code to my form. And that modifies the form. So let's actually go look at that. I'm going to have to reload this anyway to get the new form. And I'll show you what the form looks like now. Uh, it has article. The, the, it adds this encoding type, multi-part uh, form data. That's what that uh, piece of code that I typed in, this is what it's modifying. And that tells the browser that we're going to send not only just text from the input boxes, we're going to send an actual whole file. And so it breaks up the post into pieces so that you can, so the server can extract that information. All right, this is cool. Got my article. I'll say create. And it says, OK. And here is now the data of where that file got uploaded to. OK, this is the whole path name of where that file got. All right? So I can actually see that. If I go to my, my server, which is my, my Rails project here, I can look in my public folder, in the system folder, and all the way down, I can see it put it in my avatars folder, it created some numbers so that it was related to this specific koala.jpg. So this file actually got uploaded by the browser to the server. In this case, it's the same machine. But if I were to look at this, this is the koala picture. Isn't that great? It actually got uploaded. So that path in the browser is the path to the actual file. OK? and this. This here is some extra information for the cache busting that we've talked about before, so that if I change that file, the file gets reloaded. So how would I make this show that image instead of this text? There you go. So And I would do that in my uh, show page for my, no. So my show page here, I'm going to change this. Instead of just displaying the avatar, I'm going to say image tag and give it the path name to that uh, article. <clears throat> but I want it to be the actual URL from the browser's perspective. So they add a bunch of methods. They add about four different methods for me that we'll show in the console in a minute. So I, I can just say, I want the URL of the avatar that's in my uh, article table now. OK, so let's go reload that. And bada boom, I got my little koala there. Isn't that great? He's not exactly no, he's not little, which is why they, they highly recommend that you integrate this with ImageMagic, because ImageMagic could set the size of this automatically on upload and make it a thumbnail, or you know, you can make multiple sizes for that. Uh, right. Right. So this is uh, in your model here. If you wanted to change 
the sizes. Say I want to have a medium size, and, and you tell it I want a 300 by 300, and they put this little greater than sign here, uh, which is key because what it does is it says I want it 300, uh, and I forget, high, high I believe, by, by the height, and the height is proportional with this little greater than sign. It keeps this one fixed and sizes this to whatever is proportional. Because you don't want to size something that's uh, 300 by 100 down to 100 by 100 because it squishes it, right? It's going to squish the image. So this keeps it proportional. And I could create a thumb version that is 100 by 100 approximately. But to do this, you must have Image Magic installed. It just doesn't do that for you. Okay, so that's why I can't really show you that <coughs> automatic reduction of size. The server has the image magic binary on it, and after it uploads it, it does like an after save filter, and it goes and actually runs this external program with this file name and compresses it. It sends it sends a, a command to the image magic program to say resize this image and save it here and call it thumb or call it uh, medium you know so it does it's going to do that on the server itself okay so uh, so I can't really demonstrate that because I don't have image magic installed uh, now there's one issue here if I go and try to edit hopefully I'll get an error because if I try to edit this, oh, that's interesting. Did I hit back? I didn't. Huh? Look at that. That's interesting. Oh, that's true. I'm not logged in. I forgot I have authentication on this puppy now. So let's log in. That limits me, right? So that's good. It's working. So let's uh, see. I'm in recipes now. Well, I don't want to be in recipes. I want to be here, and I don't have any any links because I took all of those out, right? So, uh, yeah, I did a new. So let's do a new one without having to deal with that. Um, and let's browse to a, let's add a jellyfish instead, create the article. It'll upload the file, show me my view page. There's my nice little jellyfish. And if I hit edit, if this should work now, uh, and try to change something, change the picture, I should get a crash. I do not. Look at that. It did not crash. Now, why not? So the issue was that in the model, oh, that's why. Because I already had avatar as one of my fields. Uh, when you're adding a new field to this, that this field isn't typically in my Atra accessible here. And if it's not, and I try to update something, it'll say, I'll take it out and I'll show you the error that I get. It says, uh, can't mass assign protected attributes avatar. So I wanted to show you that error. And so because you you might be getting this if you try to add this to an existing article or model. So the mass assignment is protected by this line. This is saying only these columns can be updated. Okay, through a mass assignment, which is meaning through a post of an entire page. So to fix that, you'd have to add the avatar field, and that's what I wanted to get at. So now it would work. All right, there we go. So I got my little picture here, my little picture of my avatar, and everything's happy. All right, so let's go look. All of those pictures now 
are in my system folder in my public folder and I can see all of these uh, each one stored under its own name so I've got my chrysanthemum and my koala uh, in that when we did the gem install they had that uh, information about uh, where the path name is and so it's here um, You can tell, let's see, where is it? It was the, uh, here's the storage. I don't see it now. But there's a, a, a variable that you can change uh, where the, like here, this is where the style is going to save the information information. So you can change that. You just have to read the documentation on there. Um, so you can tell it to put it in a different place. I just don't see it offhand. Lots of, lots of data on this. But with Image Magic installed, it's just really cool. It just really does some cool stuff. Uh, the other thing it does, which I've actually deployed this on a Heroku site because Heroku doesn't let you save data to their site. Uh, you have to save your data somewhere else. And this one has integration to Amazon Web Services. And you can actually store this directly to an A Amazon website that you've set up. Yes? Here it is. Yeah. So this is it. This is it right here. Right. Yeah. That's what I was saying. In the gem, when you did the gem install or bundle install, it uh, printed that note out about where that data is. So. And this is new. I, I just noticed this. Uh, they have another gem that lets you upload stuff straight to Dropbox, which is cool. I think that would be kind of cool. So as you're uploading it, it uploads it to the server, and then the server is going to copy it over to your Dropbox account. That's uh, Yeah, exactly. Isn't that nice? Yeah. All right. Uh, Yeah, I think one of these actually I had the uh, the Atri accessible not there, so it didn't actually send the file. Didn't actually save it. Yeah, I don't think it does. <laughs> I don't think it does. So, so let's let's do that. Let's replace this flower with the uh, jellyfish. It's just a file upload system. So. Let's do the uh, jellyfish, and it probably will keep it here. So, yeah, no, it did. It overwrote it. It did overwrite it, so that file is gone. And this is, this is the file structure it uses. It, it keeps the original file, and if we had a thumb... Uh, image, it would have a folder in here called thumb and it would keep copies of all of these files for us. So that uh, when we display them, uh, we can look at each one specifically. So let's, uh, let's look at my article. Uh, let's see, this is article number 32. Ah. I've got to stop and restart my console. Uh, jQuery, again, is a client-side thing. So you can do anything you want with jQuery. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to integrate with it. I don't know what you mean by integrate. Yeah, that's outside of this gym. Gym doesn't care. It, you could do that. All right. 
2 plus 2. Let my console reload. Any questions so far? All right, so here's my avatar. Uh, if I look at the avatar method, it tells me the path name to this file. If I look at a.avatar.url, it gives me basically the same thing. Um, let's see, there are other methods. Uh, I can look at avatar. Um, dot uh, <coughs> avatar file size. Nope, it's just avatar dot file size. I think. Nope. Avatar file size. There we go. I can look at the avatar file size. This is the number of bytes that that file is taking up. I can say. Uh, a dot, and it created these these methods for me dynamically, based on when I first created the migration. The migration was avatar here. That's what I named it. If I named it user pick or something, it would it would be user pick content type. So this is the content type. So it came through. I know now that this file is a JPEG, <coughs> and so I can play with that if I needed to. So there's all kinds of. Uh, when it was updated at, um, I can do find by avatar, uh, find all by avatar, find last, initialize, all kinds of methods based on this avatar. So file name, here's the file name. What? Is jellyfish.jpg. So that's the file name as it came through the browser. So that's the file name that you had on your disk, your local disk. So I could change that. I could change the names and all that kind of stuff if I wanted to. All right, any questions on that? Isn't that cool? No, I was going to make it required for this particular one, the avatar. You can do it if you want. Uh, it's not required, though. Yeah, I know. I don't think so because uh, I just wrote it for you. There's nothing for you to do. Yeah. Well, you'd have to write some Ruby method that would go and list all the files in a particular directory. We kind of did that uh, for the maze program last quarter, uh, where you do a file.dir or file.globe, and it gives you a list of all the file names into an array, and then you might loop through that array and create image tags for each one of those to display on the screen. And then when they select one, that could be it could be radio buttons next to each one of those or something. You'd have to do it all manually. I mean, there's no gem that I know of for that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? I mean, roughly, roughly, yeah. <clears throat> all right. Any other questions? <coughs>